it would take you lot years to do what we could do now. <laughs> I feel like we could get by easily without you. I don't think so. I think so. Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Temi and today I'm here with my sister, Temi, long story. <laughs> but in today's video, essentially, we're gonna be talking about science versus engineering and the differences between the two. So we, uh, we just come over from my sister's channel. We filmed a video about the differences between like the degrees and like doing the degree at uni. But in this video, we are going to be looking at money. So we're looking at after graduation, what do you get coming out of uni? We're gonna be talking about the different fields that you can go into with a science or engineering degree. So let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna look at is the starting salary or like the median salary of an engineer versus a scientist. So I do chemical engineering. Um, I study chemical engineering at uni and you study? I study chemistry at uni. I'm currently a first year student. What university do you study at? I'm studying at Cardiff University. And I'm studying at Imperial. So, well I start this October. So, um, yeah, so what's like the starting salary of a scientist, do you know? Well, I'm gonna speak from a chemistry sort of perspective. So the average starting salary for someone who has just graduated from a chemistry degree is 22,400 pounds mm -hmm. per year. And the highest starting salary that I've seen online is 27,000 pounds. Okay, fair, fair. So for, for chemical engineering, I know different different types of engineering is different, but for chemical, the median graduate starting salary is 28,600 pounds. You mentioned the highest like salary, but for me, I've seen up to 40, 40K. For more experienced chemical engineers, the salary can go up to like, or the median salary is 54,000 pounds. For chartered engineers, the salary can be a median of 75,000 pounds. And I personally know salaries that go a lot higher than that. A big range there, basically. And when it comes to people more experienced after a chemistry degree, it really, really does depend on what industry you go into. You know, the most experienced teacher with a chemistry degree is not gonna get the same as the most experienced person making petrol and fuel, do you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it really does depend on which industry you go into and depending on that, um, you can do your own research in those different industries, but it's very, very broad. Um, and with all the different industries, we're gonna go on to that next. So what fields do people tend to go into for like chemistry? So typical fields that chemistry graduates go into is pharmaceuticals, plastics and polymers, toiletries, but toiletries isn't like bleach and that. It's more to do with like, what are them companies like Unilever, yeah. um, P&G, yeah. and stuff like that. <laughs> you've done well you've done well actually she's she's still like learning all this like industry stuff because twice the first year i didn't know but she's still learning she like watches my videos to like learn yeah and stuff. others include the metallurgical industry as well as petrochemicals so there are different industries that chemistry graduates can go into and i feel like it's very broad as well like there are so many different industries that people with chemistry degrees can go into, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah. I think they can even become chemical engineers if they wanted to. Yeah. So it's like someone once said to me, you can go from like a science to an engineering, but it's hard to go like backwards. Yeah. So if you're stuck between chemistry and like chemical engineering or like a science or engineering, like you're not gonna go wrong doing the science degree basically. Yeah. So, so in those industries, what exactly are they doing? So like for the toiletries, like say like Procter & Gamble, they're making like what? I don't know, Niv I don't know who makes Nivea, but like what exactly are chemists doing like to, to produce that? Chemists, they basically formulate all of the stuff. So like the actual formulas themselves, like in the creams, in the deodorant, it's the chemists that formulate that. You know, we actually make what you're putting under your armpits, if that makes sense. Yeah, they so basically you like design it on a sort of molecular, molecular level. level. Yeah. Whereas engineers, we then take that lab, <laughs> we take that, that lab um, scale formulation and we make it tons of product so yeah. we can get that out to market. So that's the sort of differences there. Fields that chemical engineers can go into include things like energy, food and drink, oil and gas, pharmaceuticals, 
plastics, toiletries, and water treatment. That's that's quite a special one there at the end. So a lot, there's a lot of crossover between the two between yeah. the two fields. It's just different jobs in those in those fields. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So the next thing we're going to be talking about is like what kind of person is good for each kind of course. So we'll talk about like interests first, and then we'll go on to like skills later on. But like for me, I chose chemical engineering because I wanted a mixture of science maths and actually like using it to solve a problem i don't just want to like understand the science that's i think where the passion i guess of engineers lie and actually like using your science maths your technology your knowledge to solve an actual problem and do it on a kind of large scale so yeah. what would you say is like about passions to have i guess a science um i would say well for me it's sort of similar to yours but just on a smaller scale you know like you can't make it to the top if you haven't sorted out the little things at the bottom if that makes sense so understanding things on the on a molecular on a molecular level and being able to figure out all right what's going on in the quantum world which can really impact <laughs> i never heard you say that before i did physics too in the quantum world which can really impact you know what's happening on the large scheme of things if that makes sense so someone who first we have to be very patient i would say like someone with a lot of patience good chemistry because experiment after experiment so yeah do you know what i mean oh, like true. trial and error and just really working to find what works for engineers you need to like understand engineering principles so engineer engineers always want to do things cheaply efficiently and really fast <laughs> that's what they want they basically want to make as much money as quickly as possible but do it in a way that's environmentally friendly and it's going to give you like the most bang for your buck really um and also maths you need to actually understand maths um at a really really good level what would you say like in terms of academics would be like ones for you <laughs> Wait, i don't remember what you said you have to have a decent level of mathematical skill the solid amount we're talking mm -hmm. like longs and crap <laughs> um, <laughs> of course for chemistry would be to well a lot of chemistry is about reactions and all of that lot so it's like okay what conditions is going to get you to the end True. fast enough for yeah. you to actually analyze what's going on in the reaction you know like you don't want to get there too quick you don't want to get there too slow that you're waiting yeah. days for the because then that messes end. us up <laughs> exactly so it's all about finding the right balance of getting to your end result mm -hmm. and all of that lot yeah it's very that's a good answer that's a good answer another one that you'll find in engineering is a lot is like the ability to work as a team so if you if you think about like a huge power plant it's not like one engineer that designs the whole thing that's like insane you'll have like a group of of engineers that are working like one engineer will work on a specific part and then you'll have like maybe like 10 different engineers or like 20 different engineers depending on how big the project is chemical engineers don't just work alone they work with mechanical engineers and civil engineers teamwork is a huge one that you will find um, and they tr force you to try and like work in a team throughout uni as well to try and get that skill up so i would definitely say that if you find it hard to work in a team it's definitely one that you're gonna have to sort of like get over or like try and develop yeah. but what would you say is one for like like you like in terms of like more soft skills i think for you would be like more independent working do you like do you like work in teams and labs well we work in teams because we have to Oh. So when we get into the other years, you're doing it all on your own. Yeah. All of the research and labs and all of that lot. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. we were doing it together now because there's quite a lot of us and there's not that much space. So you'd work in a pair, but later on, you're sort of doing stuff on your own. But when it comes to, like, the grand scheme of things and, like, working in industry and job, like, I don't know. I feel like you'd probably have to, you'd work, probably in have to work in a team at some point. Yeah. yeah. So I feel like it's a balance between both, really, with both. Like, you have to know how to do stuff on your own, get mm -hmm. the job done on your own, but you also don't have, need to know how to communicate with other people. You know, you might do one part of an experiment which you need to give to the next person, but it's just like, okay, what's the weight of this? How much concentration did you put first? Do you know what I mean? Like, you need to communicate your work and yeah. your work needs to get passed on to you all you've written down they've got to understand it do you get yeah. it so that's a good one another question is like is it a useful degree to have so think not just about chemistry but if you if you say do biology or to do physics 
or to do like biochem or something and for me it would be like not just chemical engineering but like civil and mechanical like would you say that having a pure science degree is, is worth it like if it's useful i think it is um not yeah, necessarily you would say that wouldn't you <laughs> yeah exactly i'm doing it but i think it is because even if i don't go into anything to do with chemistry if i'm not working in the lab if i'm going to go and fly a plane there are so, <laughs> there are so many transferable skills from chemistry like working in a team working independently analysis problem solving you know solving a problem let's say someone's flying a plane let's say the weather's moving mad what are you gonna do you need to solve that problem what other route are you flying do you know what i mean like it's just the way you use your brain in chemistry you use it in a different way for a different use it in the same way for a different thing in different parts of life even if i do nothing to do with chemistry in the future i've still got all of those skills that i've learned from doing chemistry mm -hmm. to bring on that transferable skills. skills and all that exactly i would say a similar thing for engineering so engineers you're literally trained to see a problem a certain way and fix it like that's what you're trained to do um, and engineers look at problems in a certain way. I was, I literally with my internship, I did it in the science department, so I actually did it in the environmental science department, and there aren't many engineers there, so a lot of people had done pure science degrees, and the way that people think, as like from an engineering versus scientific background, they are different because engineers are like, okay, what can we do to fix it? Like, what are we doing? Like, what's the solution? What's the, what's the step-by-step -step process? Like, yeah. we're involved in, we want to understand how to fix everything straight away. But the scientists, they tend to want to like understand it, understand the problem, like the intricacies of, so I'll definitely say transferable skills, approach that you look at a problem, like the way you look at things. So that's, I think, that's another reason why the finance sector does like to employ engineers, the way that we're able to think in like streams. So if you do chemical engineering, you'll, you'll, you'll know a bit about like streams and engineers are highly sought after. Um, just because of the way that they, they look at things. Um, and they also tend to be millionaires too. Fun fact. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, so we're gonna like have a, like one last question and that's like, which one's better? So like, is engineering better than science because we get paid more or like, is science better than engineering because without scientists, we wouldn't have the stuff to engineer. So <laughs> like, I don't know. What do you do? You, from your perspective, like, like, be honest. Which is better? Which is, which is better? Like, which is more like useful? I feel like they're both useful in just in different ways. Yeah, because with one you can't have the other. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But Without at the same time, you, you can't. Obviously, we haven't done chemistry to your level, but we've going into uni. We basically have done like similar A levels. Like you did physics, chem, and French. I did chem, maths, and what did I do? biology. The basic so, trio. Every smart person does that. <laughs> I think every smart person does maths, chem, physics. That's what I should have done. No, maths, chem, biology. Okay. We did really kind of similar A levels going into uni. We kind of need to understand chemistry on a very like a certain level to be able to even do engineering. So like, yeah. But your level, you may seem like, oh, I understand chemistry, but until you get to my level, you realise that your level is very basic. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> that was so rude. <laughs> what, so you feel like you could do without us? Is that what you're saying? Like we, could, we could get by. <laughs> I feel like we could get by easily without you. I don't think so. I think so, because think about it. We've got the chemists who are doing all the solutions. We've got physicists. They do materials as well. Mm -hmm. And all that lot. They know about that. Mm -hmm. Um producing things on a grand scale like it would take you lot years to do what we could do now right. <laughs> i think of, not in terms of producing stuff well because you don't just need chemical engineers you need like different kinds of engineers so like the chemical engineers will like design the process so we need a vessel this big to make this amount of tons of product but then the mechanical engineers will come in and be like this is how you actually build that vessel and the civil engineers will come in and be like this is how you need to build your plant so it's like a very big so then sort of what you're telling me is that you can't even do without free. someone else in exactly because it's all that complicated exactly so we all need each other well and that's all period <laughs> yeah i mean it really is up to you what you choose it's your decision where your passions and where your interests lie 
and either way you'll be making an impact in the stem field anyway so that's all it and let's not forget even though like from what you said chemical engineers or engineers earn more than chemists it depends on what industry you go into. 100%. And some people with chemistry degrees are earning more than chartered engineers. So it really depends on you and what you're doing and how far you go with it. Yeah, sure. I mean, it just depends on which way you go. So we'll end the video there. Thank you guys so much for getting to the end of the video. And for everyone that's come over from Temi Glora's channel, welcome and I hope you really enjoyed this video if you do want to hear some more tips about STEM and careers and internships and things please make sure that you subscribe and hit that bell to get notifications when I post a video also if you guys from my sister's channel are interested in university and lifestyle content you can head over to my channel the link will be in the description it's a lot of fun over there so make sure you yeah, come and join it's us it's a lot of fun and she just hit 1000 subscribers so yeah. do check out her channel it is quality content Oh, so the next video that you want to watch on this channel is going to be here. Right here this is the video to watch next so make sure you watch it also make sure you subscribe here yeah there thanks for watching bye